What's up guys, Isaiah here. I wanna do a quick um, no BS training on how to get started with the pressure washing business. Um, I've had a business, pressure washing business for going on three years now. Started at 18 years old, I'm 21 years old now. It allowed me to quit my part-time job and do this full-time and now I actually just do it on the side now because I started some other businesses so I don't pursue this as hard anymore. But I just wanna debunk a lot of myths when it comes to starting a pressure washing business on like the equipment you need, how to do the job, and all these other things. Because if you watch a lot of videos, you might get discouraged on starting a pressure washing business because you don't have ten thousand dollars to get started and just to be honest like i didn't have that much money when i started at all i actually started my pressure washing business with pretty much two hundred dollars this is back when i was in high school i didn't know what i was doing i did it on the side as a side gig versus cutting grass because i was very competitive so i went and bought a pressure washer to do something that was less competitive since then over that three year period of time well that's after i graduated um, high school so from 18 to 21 i've learned a lot of things and so i'm going to debunk a lot of myths for those of you who want to get started but you've watched other videos and they're telling you don't start unless you can invest $5,000 or don't start unless you can buy a four GPM machine. And you might not have that kind of money. So this is for those of you who want to learn how to start the business now and without a lot of investment and actually do quality work without exhilarating a lot of energy. I've pretty much mastered the process of like soft washing a house. Specifically, my market is mainly vinyl siding. I do other types of siding as well, but my market is mainly vinyl siding. So I don't know where you currently live. It's kind of like if you're in Florida, maybe stuck coat might be more popular. But um, in my region, which is North Carolina, vinyl siding is the most popular, and for me, it's pretty much easy money. So we're gonna talk a little bit about pricing in this uh, training. We're talking about like the equipment you need, uh, marketing, and a few of those things. And I'll also show you a little clip of uh, what I the device I specifically use that allows me to clean houses um, from the ground using a regular pressure washer that you can go get at your local hardware store. And so I'm really gonna explain all those things because a lot of people are probably, are probably gonna comment and leave negative comments saying, oh, you can't use equipment, it's junk equipment, all stuff. So I'm gonna basically give you my, my credibility um, and explain those things to you. So to start off, my business is iWorksPressureWashing.com. I'll leave the, you can see it right here. And also you can go to that, you can look, look you can Google me, go to my website, Facebook page, all those things, you'll see all my information on there. Uh, my Facebook page has, has almost a thousand local targeted likes. Um, and I'll explain that when we get to the marketing part. And it has over 60 all five-star reviews. So I've never gotten on my Facebook page anything less than a five-star review. So that's just the credibility part that shows you I know what I'm doing and I do quality work. So let's jump into it. Um, Sorry, your pressure washing biz on the side. And specifically, so some numbers. My business um, does anywhere between, on a normal, let's say, all right, so 3,000 to 5,000, sometimes more, depending on how hard I go. Because in a month, I kind of control my marketing. So if I want more clients, then I'll do, I'll push a little bit more money into Facebook ads or different strategies. And if I want less clients, if I want to pull off for the month, then I'll just do less. So this is where my numbers are, and also with my pricing strategy. So for those of you who might want to, I'm actually, I'll, I'll explain this too. I go after a different market of pressure washing clients. When I first started, I realized that the average price that people are getting quotes for is to three hundred plus dollars for like vinyl siding homes. Which once I realized that I actually do the job, it's a very easy job to do. Really, once you know what you're doing, um, doesn't take a lot of labor. It doesn't take a lot of cost. It costs about seven, probably say six to eight dollars to actually wash a house. Not expensive at all. It's more like gas and then your chemical. And so I want to teach you the low startup investment way of starting a pressure washing business, so you can get the profitability faster. This is not for those of you who want to go out and invest $10,000 in equipment. Go do that. This is for those of you who want to start residential, professional, pressure washing businesses. So one of the important key factors is branding. But this is my average numbers anywhere between here. So this is what it would, if an extra $3,000, $5,000 would be good for you right now. Say if you're, if you're 18 years old, like I was three years ago working a fast food job, and your two-week paycheck is like three to, 400, three to 400 bucks, this is definitely a great side hustle for you because literally your two week paycheck could be a one day paycheck. That could be five hours, three hours of work. You can earn that same amount that you're spending, that you're spending 40 hours of your time to earn. So you, the, one of the key things is in life is you wanna earn more money without, you, with, earn more money in less time and continually to do that. So this is the number you can expect if you follow exactly what I teach you. Now I said, this is not a full training. This is just a quick one. If you want more, if you want step-by-step -step training on how to wash a house, how to set up your business, how to get clients, marketing, um, get a free website. I have I've prepared a full course, and it's only 47 bucks. 
literally, I'm basically giving it away. And like I said, one of the key things is instead of you having to go out and learn how to build websites, I'm going to build your professional website for you. That way you don't have to worry about taking the time and energy to do that or spend the money because if you go out and get a website built, someone's going to charge you at least 300 to 500 bucks. And that's like on the cheaper side. Websites can go up to the thousands. Or you can do it yourself and create like a crappy looking website, which in 2018, people want to see a professional website because online and the internet plays a big role. People want to Google your business and they're looking for credibility factors. If you have some tacky website, they're not going to trust you as much. So this is the numbers. So we're talking about getting clients set up, marketing, and um, running your business. And let me go ahead and erase some of this stuff off of here. So let's talk about the first thing. Um, and this training is basically I'm going over like if I had to start from scratch right now, what would I be doing? So obviously the first thing you need, number one, you can't pressure wash if you don't have the equipment. So I'm going to go over some brief equipment things, um, not too much in depth because like I said, I do have a full training if you want to learn as much as you can. But let's go over equipment real quick. I'm just going to put equip. Some of the essential things. A lot of people will tell you you need at least a 4 GPM machine to do good work. Myth number one, you don't need that. You can go to like a store like Northern Tool, which is I got my last pressure washer from. Let's just say Northern Tool. And get a $300. I'm going to put PW for power washer. And it's going to be 2.5 GPM. If you're doing residential work, this is plenty. And let me tell you, so for about a 2400 a uh, square foot uh, two-story home will take me by myself I can get it done in about an hour about an hour um, using this machine so a lot of guys tell you, you need to go out and get a four-point GPM machine or, or plus like, you don't need that guys none of that stuff actually matters neither does needing your own water supply as long as the customers water supply is enough you can do the job and so a lot of the myths is oh customers expect you to bring your own water no they don't 99% of my customers expect me to use their water and guess what? They do not care. They understand it. And in exchange, too, offer them a better price than competitors. But I give them the, give them the same quality of work. So those myths out there, whether you're thinking right now, I can't start because I don't have a strong pressure washer. Number two, I can't start because I don't have my own water supply. All those are myths. Here's what customers really care about. They care about the quality of work you give, give them, the price, and your customer service. Those are three things. So the quality of work, the price, and your customer service. Those three factors, they don't care about you know, whether you have a big $10,000 fancy trailer set up or whether you're using $500 equipment. They care, can you get the job done for a good price? Can you do a quality work and a good price? Those are the two main things customers care about. Outside of that, all those other things might make you feel better inside, but it's not making a darn difference in your business. It's not going to affect your business. Trust me, I've done um, close to a thousand homes, if not more, and no one's had a problem with this. So this is from personal experience. So. The main thing is you need a 300 you go get you a 300 pressure washer and here's my um philosophy on that so a 300 pressure washer if you maintain it will last you at minimum at minimum six months now for me it's lasted more like eight months at minimum so that's a little bit less than a year it could last you a year as well if it's well maintained and how busy you are using it but here's the thing 300 pressure washer eight months if you earn three thousand to five thousand dollars per month, this is literally a day's worth of work. Literally, if you buy a three hundred dollar pressure washer, it pays for itself in one day, one day, and now you're profitable. Versus if you go out and start a business with a five thousand dollar trailer setup, how much longer is it taking you to get pro profitable? And therefore, now you have to charge more because you have higher expenses. You have to have a business mindset. The lower your startup costs. If you can have lower startup costs and still do the same quality of work as if you were to invest $5,000, why would you go with the $5,000 rig? I can literally replace my pressure washer 10 times before I even hit the $5,000 mark. And 10 times would be over a, you know, years, a, like I would say at least probably a five year period. This right here, and another key thing too when I buy my pressure washers, I always get a protection plan on them. So if anything goes wrong, for an extra 70 bucks when I add checkout, I can go replace the pressure washer, get it fixed. So guys, this is what you have to be thinking about. Like I said, these are self-limiting beliefs is that you have to have all these things to make your business look professional. 
What I've done, I've done a great job of branding myself as a professional company online and also doing quality work in person. A little story, when I first started, I had a hatchback car. And I put all my stuff in there. Now, mind you, online, you think I'm this big company. I pull up in this little car with all my equipment inside. Now, yes, some people were skeptical about it because I do a good job, but guess what? How did I overcome that is that I didn't let that affect me. I had a strong enough belief in myself that I could do the quality of work. So regardless of what vehicle or equipment I had, I always did the best work I could do. So when I pulled up to the customer's house, they might have been skeptical, but no one ever turned me away. And guess what? I did my best work, and then after they were done, after I was done with the house and they loved it, they would say, you know what? At first, you know, I was a little worried whether you could do the job or not. But guess what? I proved myself. That led to more referrals. So guys out there, if you have limiting beliefs right now, you need to overcome those beliefs. Believe in yourself. How do you do that? By uh, repetition. Know you can do the job good. Now, yes, I'd be nervous too about pulling up to someone's house if I didn't know what I was doing. So if you pull up in a, you know, in a hatchback or whatever like I did, and you also do a crappy job, then yes, it's going to have a negative effect. But like I said, all customers care about carry, care about is the quality of work you do. So anyway, back to this. A $300 pressure washer. Get yourself a protection plan. On the pressure washer. Now you're good. If anything happens within the first, usually those last you about two years. One time, one repair over two years. So if, the, if the, anything happens within two years, you can get it fixed. So number one, you need this. Number two is you're gonna need, um, you're gonna need an, what I call, I call it a foam applicator. Okay. I sell these on my website. I'm going to leave the link below in this video so you can go get one. I'm also going to leave a clip in this video so you can see exactly what the device is and how it works and how it allows me to combine these two things right here to clean two and three story homes from the ground. Do the same soft wash process that you can go invest $5,000 plus in that kind of equipment, but I'm going to allow you to I'm going to teach you the same method, the same psychology behind a soft wash using a lot cheaper method. These two things right now, you're in... 325 bucks. This device only costs 25 bucks on my website. Get your pressure washer. Now you can clean a home. The next thing you need is going to be um, your chemical, which is typically sodium hypochlorite. I'm going to just put SH, and I'll go ahead and write that right there. Sodium hypochlorite. I don't even know how to spell hypo. I'm just going to put hypochlorite. Hypo. Anyway, so this is also called... For those of you who don't know, this is also just called outdoor bleach. Outdoor bleach. Oops, forgot the A. Whatever. I'm not even going to correct it. Outdoor bleach. You can get outdoor bleach. The cheapest I found it is at Home Depot. And it's like $4.38 per gallon, um, which can be diluted because it's concentrated. So, these three things, and now you can clean a house. Main things you need. I have more equipment than this, but if you're just getting started and you're on a budget, these are your three main things you need. Now, also, if you want to be able to do things like, this is just for doing houses. Now, if you want to be able to do things like uh, driveways um, and decks and stuff, you're going to need what's called a surface cleaner. I'll write that up here. Surface cleaner. This is a device that spins in circles. It's like a round circle thing. It almost looks like if you were uh, um, not waxing the floor, but like buffing the floor. And um, you can get one from Lowe's, which is a little small one, which is what I started with. Guys, I started with, I want to re reiterate, I started with very basic equipment, and I still use pretty simple equipment, even though some of my equipment has been upgraded. This one, if you get the little small one from Lowe's, it'll run you about 65 bucks. Now, I use that, made money with that. And here's the biggest point. Go out, make money. As you make money, reinvest into your business and get better equipment. But start with whatever you can. Just go out, do good work, get practice, build up reviews, reinvest that money and that's how it works that's the best way to do it now i now have a 300 dollars surface cleaner which is bigger the reason why i got that is because it lasts me longer and also it cleans faster because it's a bigger circumference one of the biggest things in this business because the cost of doing home is so cheap seven to six to ten bucks the biggest thing now is your labor time the faster you can clean the more profitable you are so someone can go out, clean a house, do a good job, and it'll take them three hours. Or someone can go do the same or do an even better job and do it in one hour. 
Both can charge two hundred dollars, but but who makes more money in reality? The guy who took one hour because now he made two hundred dollars an hour. The other guy made a hundred dollars an hour. They made the same amount, but in reality, guy number two made more money because it took him less time. And you can charge whatever you want in this business, pretty much. Above your cost, guys, everything else is profit. So you can charge whatever you want. But the faster you are, the better you are off. So if you want to upsell things like driveway cleanings while you're there, or that might be your main job. I've actually, in one day, I've made, I think it was 750 bucks. I did two driveways in one house. I made $300 a piece on each driveway and I did a house for 100 bucks. Eight hour, I think it was like an eight hour day, but that means I made $100 an hour that day. $800 in one day. How many of you right now are making $800 a day at your job? Probably not many people. So that's the type of thing. And guess what? I didn't even have the big service clean back then. I made that money using a uh, $65 service cleaner. Now, mind you, had I had the bigger one, I could have been more profitable, profitable that day because it took me less time. But I didn't. But guess what? I still made the money. So here's the thing. Four things that you might need to start up with. Now, like I said, there's more equipment. If you want the full list of equipment that I have, um, enroll in the course for 47 bucks. Now, I'm not trying to sell you on the course, but for those of you who really want to learn, it's a $47 investment. That's literally nothing. And Okay, so a bit of a technical difficulty, but anyway, finishing off where I left. Um, like I said, for the course, if you don't learn anything from it, there's a full 30-day money-back guarantee. But guys, it's 50 bucks, literally no investment. You know, if you can't afford 50 bucks, you need to save up some more money. It's just you're rolling it. At least get what you can. Like I said, also, a free website is included, which is like a $300 value. I'm just going to do it for you. So, for those of you, too, who say, okay, 350 bucks to get started with this business, I still don't have it right now. So, my advice to you, here's, you got like three options. Option number one is you need to be working more hours at your current job, whatever income you're making. Save up some more money. You know, cut expenses that you don't need. Stop eating out so much or stop buying clothes, stop going out. Put away money. Save birthday money, those type of th stuff. Any extra money you get, put it away to start your business. Um, I said this is very low cost, but very profitable when you do it right. Number two, if you have good credit, if you have good credit, you can go get a store card for like Northern Tool or Home Depot or Lowe's. You can get a credit card, hopefully get like a line of like $3,000 or whatever, depending on how good your credit is. Once you get approved for that, now you can buy all your equipment. And now, once you have your equipment, those are breaks down the monthly payments. So that might be a monthly payment of like $35. Now you can go make money, and then once you make that money, you get clients, you have your equipment, you can go pay that credit card off. That's called leverage. It's called smart debt. It's a good difference between good debt and bad debt. Um, a book recommendation for you is Rich Dad Poor Dad. Check that book out. You'll learn the concept between that. That's called leverage. So as long as your business income is greater than your monthly debt that you're paying, you're good. But you want to go ahead and pay it off once you start making some money. So that's the way to leverage. For those of you who haven't started building credit yet, if you go to my personal website, I'll link for that too, IsaiahIC.com. There's a free course on building credit and how to do it the right way. So, there's number one, save money. Do it that way. Number two is finance your business with credit. Number three is maybe you can get a personal loan from like a friend or family member. That's the least recommended. I don't recommend doing that. Unless you have someone like your grandma or somebody who really loves you and wants to do that, that's an option. But either one or two are options that I really recommend doing. Um... So moving on from that, touch the equipment, pressure washer, uh, this applicator, and uh, the sodium hypochlorite. There's three things you mainly need. Also, you'll need like a second story nozzle. Um, you can just Google that. Or I said the lows. It's usually a blue tip. Um, and then your surface cleaner if you want to sell for so driveway cleanings and decks. So now I explain the equipment, how to finance your business, stuff like that. Moving on to number two, I'm just going to do a brief overview of the difference between soft washing and power washing. So soft washing uses low pressure, hopefully you can see that, low pressure. This is in the name, power washing. So this, is uses, this uses high pressure. Now, for houses, you're going to use low pressure. Unless you're cleaning brick, which you'll need a little more pressure. Power washing you're going to use for doing things like decks, driveways, hard surface things. Houses is low pressure. This, this is when you're cleaning from the ground. This is direct pressure. Most customers don't know the difference between soft wash and a house wash. When they call you, they're going to say, I want my house power wash. That's okay. They, they know what they want. Their house, they want their house clean. But you, on the, you as the uh, operator, you know that you're doing the soft 
wash on the house. Like I said, soft wash is light pressure. Most of the work is done with the chemical when you're soft washing. When you're power washing, most of the cleaning is done through the power, the pressure that's coming out the pressure washer. So I have a variable pressure washer, which means I can lower the pressure down and use as much or as little as I want. So I'm cleaning a house, I turn the pressure down and I use light pressure just for rinsing. And I applicate the house using that device, which I'm gonna leave a clip in this video to show you how to actually wash the house. I'm using sodium hypochlorite, sometimes with an added surfactant to, let, to make it stick more. With those things, I clean from the ground, the mold of mildew rinses down. It pretty much kills it. So you're killing the mold of mildew, that way it's not gonna come back immediately, which should last a customer about one to two years. Once you do that, you applicate as many times. This is pretty much a rinse and repeat type thing when washing a house. Um, you applicate it, you're killing the mold, and then you come back through and rinse. And you do that as many times as you need to. So the di main difference between this is I put chemical does the work. And over here, pressure. Like that. Main difference, and this is your cleaning from the ground. You can clean from the ground. But if you're depending on power washing, you're cleaning on a ladder. Main difference right here. So over here, you're using like second story nozzle using an applicator to applicate the siding. And I'm gonna teach you my unique low cost startup, I mean setup for uh, soft washing homes without using a bunch of expensive equipment, like I said. Main difference, this is all you really know about soft washing, pressure washing, chemical, low pressure, that's the main thing. All right, so let's say you understand, now you understand how to uh, wash a house you understand um, what equipment you need. Now, how do you get clients? This is the part that would, most people struggle at. Most people struggle with getting clients. Now, my bread and butter for the last few years has been using Facebook, Facebook ads. Now, in this training, since I'm on the board, I can't really teach you about Facebook ads. And that's not really the goal of this. This is to teach you what you can use and you can go out and learn more about it. Unless, like I said, you wanna enroll in the course, then you will learn about it. So Facebook ads, paid ads. You can start with ads. I start all my ads at $5 per day. The reason why I like Facebook because you can use very local targeted traffic. So with Facebook, I can go in, put an ad, using my ads consist of me doing before and after pictures with, a, uh, with text that have a hook in it, so good copywriting. So I have a hook in my ads, which uses like, hey, two-story house wash starting at $99. It gets people hooked in. Now, mind you, everybody who calls doesn't get that price, but it gets people hooked. So I would say for this, the basic setup is you want to have text, which right here we'll just put a hook in between that. And then we have before and after pictures. We'll put an A and we'll put a B. And then we'll put a CTA, which is a call to action. So this is what a Facebook ad would look like. We have the hook, before and after pictures, and a CTA, a call to action. So we say blah, 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 great deal, great deal, great deal, call us now, website link, before and after picture, call to action. Click now, book now. They can go book the appointment, they can call you. These are the three components of an ad. Start at $5 per day, and then within the ad, you're going to uh, choose your local targeted traffic. So that might be um, your local traffic, whatever city you're in, you're gonna put, usually the, the ages, uh, the best age range to market to. For me, I found out it's 34 to 60 plus is where you're gonna find homeowners who will need your service. Number two, Usually you get more engagement from women, but I won't put that. You also want to put, though, um, you want to put, uh, oh yeah, you want to put such a range at $5 per day. But then you also want to put your local city. And put, this is going to give you an option to put the amount of miles you're willing to travel up to. So for me, I live in Greensboro. I'll put up to, I travel up to personally, I travel up to like 40 miles or within an hour range because it's still profitable. If it gets the closer it gets to an hour range, I might charge a little bit more because of more gas costs. But I'll travel up to an hour. I don't know where you live. I don't know what you want to do. Totally up to you how hungry you are for business. So these are the main components. Facebook used to allow you to, to target directly homeowners, but they took that setting away. I guess they're trying to um, give people back more privacy or whatever, so they don't have the information anymore. But one of the key things with ads is that you have to keep doing it. It takes about let's say a market takes about five to seven hits. 
before someone um, does or responds to your call to action. Some people will see your ad the first time and your phone might ring. Some people may see it two or three times and they might not call you. But it might be the fifth time that they call you. So if you're running your ads and you're not getting as much phone calls as you think you should be, keep running them. You have to spend that money. People have to become aware of your business. So a key thing with this is you're doing brand awareness. The more people see your Facebook ads consistently too, they trust your business. It's more reviews build up, more comments, more engagement. And I say in psych it's like a, it's a psychology that a crowd attracts a crowd. So the more people that engage with your ad, it's gonna cause more people to engage moving forward. That's the key things about Facebook. Now, that's just one way of traffic and honestly one of my main sources. Um, and some of the other things are, after you get going, after your business has been established for a while, and one of the key things is you always wanna get reviews from people and do quality work, because that leads to referrals, which referral marketing is one of the biggest, um, one of the best ways to get clients, because that way when someone refers you, they've already got your trust because they trust the person that referred them. So now when they call you, they just want the job done. They're not worried about you know whether you have five star views or not. They just trust that you can do the work because someone told them you can. So Facebook, referrals, lead gen services. When I first started, I used a service called Home Advisor, um, which they were okay. I got a few jobs from them, um, built up some credibility, got some reviews. But here's the way that works. Lead gen services, like Home Advisor, which you can check them out, it's gonna cost you about three hundred dollars to sign up for a year membership, but then they charge you anywhere from like fifteen to like thirty bucks per lead they send you. But it's only they're charging you just for you to contact them. So you might not get the job, but you'll still be charged. You'll still be charged uh, fifteen to thirty dollars, whatever that range is, just for them giving you um, a possible lead. Now, one of the key things is if you use that service, that you want to be the first person to call. As soon as that lead comes in, you call them and you'll convert more. That was my success with them. But once you master Facebook and stuff, you kind of don't need to use them as much. But if you're starting off, you want to use as many sources of uh, marketing as you can. So I've used, I've got referrals, Facebook, Legion services like Home Advisor. I pass out flyers, um, SEO, so that stands for search engine optimization. So when you have a website, you have it ranked in Google, that first page. If you come up on the first page, people are more likely to call you. So some of the, those are some of the main sources of marketing that I've utilized is uh, Facebook and all those different ones. So once again, if you want more details on that, you can get in the course. So but I'm just trying to give you a quick training. This is probably going to be about 30 minutes long and give you as much value as I can. So this is how you get leads. And obviously, you need to have a business phone number set up. Um, and also, there's a booking service. That way, people can book their appointments um, if you want to set up that way. So we just talked about getting clients. We talked about the equipment you need. Now let's talk about some things you might need to run your business. So, be able to take cash, credit cards, and checks. So you need a business bank account, stuff like that. Uh, number two, let's see what else you need. I would say use Square, download the Square app so you can take cards. There's also Square Appointments, which allows you to book and manage all of your appointments in there so you can stay organized. So Square and Square Appointments, same software. So these two were connected. Um, you want to manage your uh, money, so I would say service like QuickBooks to document everything. Square will also keep up with all your sales and transactions for you. Um, what else? Business phone number. I use Grasshopper. Now they have gone up in price, so you might want to find a cheaper one. You need a second phone number. It's 2018. Literally download an app on your phone. You got a second phone number. There's Sideline. There's Text Now. Literally. Um, it uses your phone, uh, phone line, phone service, and it'll ring a second number to your phone. That way you can just keep things separate. And that way you know when someone's calling you, they're specifically calling about business. You're not, inter you're not um, interfering with your personal calls and business calls. You're not mixing them together. So I definitely recommend having a second phone number. I'll just put second number. Second phone number is de definitely recommended. And those are pretty much some of the key things if you're just getting started. And I do highly recommend, regardless of what you do, have a Facebook page and have a website. I built my website through WordPress. When I first started three years ago, I had no idea what I was doing. Over that time, because I do other things than just pressure washing, I pretty much became like a professional designer on, web on WordPress. That's why I include a free website for anybody who goes on the training. You can learn how to build on WordPress. You can use Wix. Um, 
those are some of the main services. So WordPress, Wix. Wix is just drag and drop, and they charge a monthly cost for that. Not, much, not sure how much it costs because I don't use them. If you want a website built and you're not enrolling in the course, you can simply contact me if you want, and I can design your website. We can talk about the pricing for there. But once again, I'm going to charge you more than 50 bucks to do it. So if you want a website, once again, sign up for the course. So you see, we talked about uh, getting clients. We talked about um, managing the appointments. Oh yeah, the last thing we're going to talk about is pricing. So let me go ahead and erase this, and we'll talk about pricing real quick, and we'll be done. So, when it comes to pricing, like I said, literally the cost per house is going to equal about six to ten bucks for the average size house. Um, and depending on your marketing region, like I said, anything above this is profit. So however long it takes you to do a house, you want to get paid accordingly. Now in the beginning, since you're not experienced, it's going to take you a while to do the house, probably. Um, unless you follow exactly what I teach you to do. It's probably going to take you um, a little bit longer in your first few houses until you get into a good rhythm. So I would say for one-story homes, one-story homes are easy. Easy money. Easy money for one-story homes. One-story homes that are 1,800 square feet or less. I'd say don't charge any more than 150 bucks. Or a home that's 1,800 square feet or less, one story. Don't charge more than 150 bucks. It's really not like, it's not gonna take you much work at all. Especially too, I would use on this one, use the backpack spray method, put your chemical in there, go around, spray the whole house, literally come through a rinse. A one story house this size or less should take you, I'm gonna say 40 minutes. 40 minutes. 150 bucks or less in 40 minutes, guys. If you can charge 100 or 85 bucks, it's 40 minutes of work. Where else are you getting it? You're, not, you're probably making $10,000 an hour at your job right now. And it's, take that out of there. You're making good money. And you're not squeezing the customers. Customers appreciate that when you give them a good rate. Guys go out, try to charge 300 bucks for a one-story home. That's not going to take but 40 minutes, guys. You're kind of like scamming customers. It's really not worth you charging that much. And in return of you charging a better price, you're going to get more referrals. So that's what I say for that. If you're two-story homes... And we'll just put two story. If it's say 2,400 square feet or less, I'm gonna say 250 or less, or less for this size home. And this could take you about, once you become good at it, one hour. Now you might be looking, and you see that two story homes and one story homes don't take much of a, not much of a different in time. They're really not. Cause it's the same process. It's really not. It's just a little bit higher. It takes them out the same amount of time, pretty much. I would say maybe an hour, point five. So maybe an hour and a half to versus forty minutes. This is the basic range for pricing. I charge a little bit less than this because I I become fast and I try to give my customers the best price and still feel good about myself. So this is an, a pricing chart for you. Now I would say do I go with the flat rate pressure washing model, a flat rate cost. So when customers call me, I know. Most of the time, they're, they're um, it's guaranteed money. Outside of that, though, if their home is above my flat rate prices, then I give them a quote. Um, I usually will take the flat rate price. So, so say this. Let's do some math. If the home, if their home is 3,000 square feet, and my flat rate price for a 2,400 square feet home is 200, I'm going to subtract. Um, I'll take $200. That's the base. Take the difference of 3,240, I mean 2,400, and it leaves me with six. I'll multiply the 600 square feet by 15 cents and add it to the 200, and that's the quote for their home. But the basic thing is for quoting a house is you want to figure out how much you want to make per hour. And I say a good amount in the beginning is $50 to 100 per hour, and how long it'll take you to do the house. So if you charge 60 bucks per hour, and the house is going to take you two hours, that's 100 and what I say, that's 120 bucks. Now you might want to add a little bit more to that. Depending on you know what you want to make, but that's the basic thing, guys. Basic guide for second pressure washing business. Hopefully, if you have any other questions, leave a comment below. Once again, all the links will be um, provided. The link for the applicator, link for my personal website. If you want to learn how to build your credit, that's a free course, and then also the paid course for learning how to start a pressure washing business will be in the link uh, in the links. I, like I said, I'll try to answer any questions you guys have. If you want to check out my business, on my website, Facebook page is iWorks Pressure Washing. 
www.facebook.com and Facebook iWorks Pressure Washing. I'll leave all those links as, as well. And at the end of this, you'll see a quick clip of uh, me doing uh, surface cleaning and also me washing a house where I can show you what device I use um, to clean homes from the ground. So guys, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it helped. If it helped you, if it added any value, please like it. If you hated it, you hate me, you hate my business, you hate everything I stand for, leave a dislike. I don't care. I'm unbiased. So guys, 